what are, aka Mega Bolts. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at Dialga V Star. Now, I have been kind of saying that I'm not the biggest Dialga fan. Now, while that is still true, I figured I should at least give it the shot that it genuinely deserves. And boy, was I ever wrong. This deck actually has potential, and it is something to really consider in the meta currently. So let's jump right in to that deck list. Alrighty, here we are at that deck list. Now, huge shout out and credit to Andrew Hedrick. This is his winning list from the Indianapolis Regals. So congratulations again for that big win. This will be the list that I'll be using in today's video. So I wanted to give a shout out to Andrew Hedrick. Starting off here with Origin Form Dialga V-Star for its first attack here, Metal Blast for one colorless energy. 40 plus, the attack is 40 damage for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. And then for its V-Star power and its second attack, Star Kronos for 5 energies, 4 metal, and 1 colorless energy, 220 damage. You take another turn after this one. So being able to potentially KO an Arceus V or Dialga V or Giratina V, take 2 prize cards, and then take another turn is something really powerful that you can do with this deck. And then, of course, to be able to power energies to our Dialga, we have the new Matang from the Temporal Forces set, Ability Metal Maker. Once during your turn, you may look at the top four cards of your deck and attach any number of basic metal energies you find there to your Pokemon in any way you like. Shuffle the other cards and put them on the bottom of your deck. It's a second attack, or it's first attack, the only attack, Beam <laughs> for 60 damage for three energies, one metal, and two colorless as well. So pretty decent attack on some single prize Pokemon. And something really cool is you can put basic metal energies on any Pokemon. It doesn't have to be a metal type Pokemon, it can be any Pokemon. So of course, we do play one copy of Mew EX, not only for its ability to restart, because something that does happen in Dialga is you tend to have pretty small hands, sometimes no cards in hand at all. So its ability to restart, being able to draw up to three cards, can be really helpful, and it's very powerful attack genome hacking for three colorless energy. Choose one of your opponent's active Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So being able to copy things like Charizard DX or Lost Impact or anything like that can be really helpful. And then, of course, as well, we got to play one copy of this single prizer, Zamazenta, with this ability Metal Shield. This Pokemon has any energy attached, takes 30 less damage from attacks. So, effectively having 160 HP. But its attack retaliate for two metal energy and one colorless, 100 plus damage. If any of your Pokemon were knocked out during your opponent's last turn, this attack does 120 more damage. So, once again, being able to potentially take KOs on Arceus Vs, Giratina Vs, Lugia Vs, with a single prize Zamazenta is really, really cool and really powerful that you can do in this deck. And of course, very heavy research, heavy Iono, heavy Super Rod to be able to go through the deck as fast as possible, heavy metal energy count as well. So for the full deck list here, we got four Beldum, four Matang, three Dialga V, three Dialga V Star, one Zamazenta, one UEX, one Radiant Greninja for that draw engine as well, four Professor's Research, four Iono, three Boss, four Nest Ball, four Ultra Ball, four Super Rod, two Buddy Buddy Poffin, two Poke Gear 3.0, one Prime Catcher, and four 15 metal energies already let's jump right in to that gameplay already here we are at that dialga v-star gameplay here at our corn flip we're gonna pick tails as i always do if you guys have been watching my content for any length of time you always know i pick tails at the option for the coin flip sometimes it doesn't work out though so our opponent is gonna win the coin flip here is gonna decide who goes first now i personally think going dialga you want to go first you want to be able to evolve your Beldum's into Matangs, Dialga V into V-Star, and things like that as well. Starting in here, not too bad. Got a Mew EX, Matang, Super Rod, Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and two Metal Energies. Going up against probably Charizard here. We got a Pidgey up in the active spot for them here. We're going to be able to also top deck that Buddy Buddy Poff in here. So we're going to get two Beldum's. Going to be able to Nest Ball here as well. I'm going to grab myself that Dialga V. Be able to attach an energy to the Dialga here. And then I'm going to be able to also Ultra Ball if I want to. But I'm going to like to pass turn. And the reason I did that is because, yes, I could Ultra Ball away Metal Energy, Matang, Super Rod them back in, draw three. But that doesn't guarantee me being able to evolve Mat Beldum and Matang next turn. And also, I have Ultra Ball, so I can just find Dialga V-Star as well. Our opponent here going to bench a Charmander. Use that call for family attack, getting two basic Pokemon and putting them directly onto their bench. 
So now we're going to be able to see here if they're playing maybe like Tordzard with the Babero line in it as well. Maybe we're going to have a Cleffa or a Rotom or something. They're going to grab themselves that Bidoof and that Cleffa here. So now, okay, we're going to get ourselves another Nest Ball here for our draw for turn. We're going to be able to evolve that Beldum into Matang. Going to be able to Nest Ball here. And we're going to be able also to Ultra Ball. So I'm actually going to like to Ultra Ball discard Nest Ball and Metal Energy so I can grab myself another Matang so I can hopefully set up this Dialga V and have a really early Star Kronos attack potentially. So I'm going to Metal Maker here. I'm also going to have Super Rods. So we're going to Super Rod the Energy back in just to kind of thin the hand a little bit. Metal Maker for one Energy here. Attach it to the Dialga. Metal Maker again. Going to hit another Energy putting that to the Dialga. We still have yet to attach for turn also. So we're going to restart here, be able to attach for turn, going to be able to play the Professor's Research, drawing into seven cards. Nest Ball, going to find myself another Dialga V here. Going to be able to get Ultra Ball, discarding two Metal Energies to grab myself Dialga V-Star. Going to be able to evolve Dialga V into Dialga V-Star. And unfortunately, I am going to be one energy short from being able to Star Kronos, but we're going to be able to Metal Blast for 200 for at least a KO here, taking one prize card. Now, if I could have Star Kronos and then taken that KO, taken another turn, and KO'd something else, I would have been really far ahead of the game, and probably the, our opponent may have conceded. Not too sure. My opponent here going to bench a Radiant Charizard, play the Iono here. Now, Radiant Charizard is something that's really scary in this deck, because, yes, Charizard EX does use Fire Energies, but it's a Dark-type Pokemon, so it doesn't hit Dialga for weakness, but Radiant Charizard does. So that's a little bit scary, something we have to kind of manage and work around a little bit. So, pretty decent hand here. Gonna have two Matangs set up. We're gonna have another Matang in hand as well. Gonna be able to buddy buddy for that Beldum. Gonna have Matang for the following turn. So, I'm gonna Metal Maker here. Gonna be able to hit one energy, put it to the Dialga V. Also, attach for turn to the active Dialga. So, I will be able to start Kronos this turn here. Metal Maker, whiff on that second Metal Maker. I'm gonna Ultra Ball discarding Matang. Metal Energy, because I knew I had another Matang in the deck. So, hopefully, I'll be able to find that off of maybe I, my, my Iono or maybe my restart or something. So we're going to restart here, boss, metal energy. Going to be able to have Iono here. But I am going to elect to boss's orders, pour up that Charmeleon, star Kronos the Charmeleon here, take a prize card, going to be able to take another turn. So we're keeping our opponent off of Charizard. We had a really fast, really aggressive setup. So we're able to start Kronos really early here. So now I'm going to attach for turn to that Dialga. Going to be able to Metal Makers again. Going to have Super Rod. So we're going to Super Rod three Metal Energies back into the deck here. Going to restart for one. Going to get a Beldum here. Now we're going to Metal Maker. We're going to hit one energy off that Metal Maker. I'm going to put it to Dialga V-Star. Going to be able to Metal Maker again here. Hitting three energies off of that Metal Maker. So I'm going to put... Two to the Mew EX, one to the Dialga V-Star. And the reason I started to set up the Mew EX is because if it gets late game for this, Burning Darkness does scale and I can copy my opponent's Charizard EX. So I will be able to genome hacking to hopefully hit my opponent's Charizard for 330 if I have exactly, if he has exactly one prize card remaining. So, we're going to Metal Blast there, take the KO on that Bidoof. My opponent's going to promote that Cleffa here. Going to be able to Buddy Buddy Poff and getting themselves two Charmanders here to try to set up, or sorry, Charmander and a Pidgey to try to keep getting set up here. But I'm in a position where they're going to be able to take a KO on my Dialga V-Star because that Radiant Charger is going to be able to Combustion Blast for 500 damage to my Dialga. So we're at a 3-6 split, so we're pretty far ahead of the game. My opponent going to hit us with a late game Roxanne here, putting me at two cards, unfortunately. But this is where that Mew EX comes into play, that restart ability really being able to help out and just kind of keep getting some cards in our hand here. So Combustion Blast coming for 500 damage to the Dialga here. We're going to promote our other Dialga V-Star here. So we're at a 3-4 split, so we're still ahead on the prize trade. We're still ahead on the race a little bit. We're going to be able to Super Rod here. We're going to be able to have a Dialga V on top of that. So I'm going to Super Rod first. I'm going to put a two Metal Energies, and I'm going to put... Uh, no, sorry, three Metal Energies. I was thinking about putting the Dialga V-Star back in the deck, but I figured I still have another Dialga V-Star in the deck, and I know that. So I'm digging for Zamazenta without even realizing that it's in the prize cards at this point in the game, actually. Um, so I sort of bench the Dialga V there, and then be able to evolve into Dialga V-Star a little bit later. But we're going to be able to also Metal Maker here, but I'm not going to elect to Metal Maker. I'm just going to take the KO with that Metal Blast putting me at a 2-4 split. Now, I'm in a position where my opponent has a bunch of single prize Pokemon on the bench. It may not be able to evolve them. So, the reason I didn't Metal Maker there is because I want to leave myself the opportunity to be able to Metal Maker energies to my Matang so I can take KOs 
with Matang on that Pidgey, the Cleffa, or the Charmander on the bench. So I have to hopefully find Prime Catcher or my couple copies of Boss as well. So they're going to play Iono here, giving me into Professor's Research and Ultra Ball. So we're going to be able to Professor's Research on my next turn, which is going to be great. It's one of the great things about this deck is you're kind of always able to come back out of Iono's or Roxanne's most of the time. So we're going to research here, be able to evolve Beldum and Matang. Going to have another Beldum in the hand. Got Prime Catcher, two Metal Energies as well. So we're in a position where I can start potentially being able to take KOs with a Matang if I have to. And we have Boss and Prime Catcher in hand. So just kind of looking through, I got two Ionos and a Super Rod off of that still in the deck. We're gonna Metal Maker one energy there. We're gonna hit another energy off of that. We still got one Boss, one Research Dialga V in the deck as well. I'm gonna make her one more time here, hitting one more energy. Got the Dialga V, Star Burning Granger, and Iono. So now I'm going to be able to also attach for turn here. But I'm not going to attach for turn because I don't really have a reason to. So we're going to Prime Catcher up the Pidgey, put up the Matang, Beam for 60 damage to take a KO, putting us at a 1-4 split. Now the reason I did that is because I don't want them to be able to Quick Search into Pidgey, or into Pidgeot, and then be able to Quick Search, or... Rare Candy into Pidgeot, is going to be able to find them other pieces, like another Rare Candy into Charizard, and kind of let them set up later in this game. I don't want to let that happen. I want to be able to really contain this game. Our opponent has been able to respond pretty nicely, though, with the Radiant Charizard, being able to kind of still set up, even though we've had a lot of hand disruption and a lot of bosses' orders coming their way. They're going to be able to Rare Candy, or sorry, not Rare Candy, evolve into the Charizard EX, because they had that in their hand here. It's so going to be able to Infernal Rain, putting one energy to the Charizard, one energy to the Charmander. And then boss up my Dialga V here. Burning Doctrine is 330 damage. But what they don't know is I have boss's orders in my hand, so I'll be able to promote this Matang, and then be able to boss up either the Charmander or the Cleffa here for KO for the game. So I'm going to boss up that Cleffa here, beam for 120 damage, because it is weak to take the last prize card. Now, once again, I will say I was absolutely wrong about Dialga V-Star. This deck is something to really consider in a force to be reckoned with in our current metagame, being able to not only take an extra turn, but potentially being able to take a KO with that 220 damage from that Star Chronos, and then take another turn and potentially take another KO as well. So a total of like four prize cards back to back is really insane. So now let's jump right in to that outro. All right, that's gonna do it for today's video. Once again, huge shout out to Andrew Hedrick for that winning deck list from the Indianapolis Regals. I'll make sure to put that deck list that I played in today's video in the description below. So you guys wanna try it out for yourself, you'll be able to. If you guys are enjoying the content I've been making so far here on the channel, don't forget to leave a like, smash that subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.